Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Celebrating Act Two, where Art and I are with the fabulous Hollywood historian and man of great taste, Manny Pacheco. Manny, it's great to see you again. Well, thank you. About great taste, I do like Italian and Mexican food, so I guess I have great taste. <laughs> I yes, mean, in do. movies. Yes, oh, in movies. I, oh, and, oh, oh. and in I picking your friends. Well, maybe, maybe you, you fell down there a little bit. But so, Manny, I was. Uh, I love these documentaries. You know, all the stuff that Ken Burns does, and uh, uh, I just recently saw a two-parter on uh, William Randolph Hearst. Uh, recently, oh, okay, yeah. but there there are tons of documentaries on it, and I haven't gotten to see it yet. Although I am vaguely aware of this guy named Max uh, Steiner. Uh, yes. Uh, actually, a, a pretty heavyweight composer that I only barely knew. Obviously, we know some of his music. Uh, what can you tell us about him? Legendary composer. Oh, my gosh. It all begins with Max Steiner. I mean, talk about the pioneer of pioneers of movie scores. I mean, there would be no Alfred Newman or Eric Korn, Wolfgang Korngold or, or um, Dimitri Tiomkin. There would be none of these uh, great great composers without Max Steiner. There'd be no Bernard Herrmann. Uh, there'd be uh, just n no John Williams. I mean, I, really, it all begins with Max Steiner. And I saw this documentary on TCM that really just spelled it out. And it spelled it out from the beginning, from his roots in Austria, where he got to learn the greats in classical uh, training, classical music. And then uh, ventured back into um, Broadway. He moved and, and ended up in, on Broadway and making friends of people like Jerome Kern and, and George Gershwin, uh, much like uh, much like many many of the the great uh, talents that that are out there. They got to collaborate with legendary composers, and he was able to score the compositions on Broadway live. And it was his love of classical music with his ability to score Broadway shows that led to this formulation of how to score a movie and really change the trajectory of music in film. He is absolutely iconic. Well, now that's a pretty big claim that he was, that none of these other great names would, would you know, owe it all to him. Was he there first or was that's he... Right. What was his what was his early big success? Well, before Max Steiner, in you know, when sound came along, you know, when 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 Al Jolson finally said you ain't heard nothing yet. Sure. You know, music was either somebody singing a song or you had music in the background that sounded like something you would hear in a supermarket or an, yes. an elevator. It Very was just common. Yes. background uh, drawing board kind of music, you know, drawing room, I'm sorry, drawing room kind of music. And it just wasn't very consequential at all. He saw something different, and he saw it in two different ways. He felt that the, the, the music should have a rhythm, a beat that matches what's going on in the plot. And he felt that each character should have its own kind of music. And by combining those two factors, in the first movie that he did it, made such a tremendous impact. I mean, the movie itself would have been impactful without music. With music, it becomes something we still talk about 90 years later, and that's King Kong. Hmm. Really? Yeah. King Kong was the game changer. It was the movie that really spelled out how each character could have their own. I mean, really, Faye Ray had her own music. The, the, the ape had his own music. And 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 even even the different scenes. I mean, there's a, this one scene when when he destroys a a subway train, and when you hear the, the background music as these people are on the subway, it's very reminiscent of train music. I mean, he just every scene became important to him. Now, your question was a good question. Why is he first, and what is it? it it's not that he was only first, but he became prolific. He would do literally. Hundreds, I mean, maybe close to thousands of films, many times working at two or three or four or six at a time, wow. and all extraordinarily memorable. Yeah. Okay, but 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 uh, King Kong, you say was the first, but it, it certainly what he what he did in King Kong still is not as memorable to most human beings 
in the movie right. world as Gone with the Wind. Yes, and he did do Gone with the Wind. Let me tell you a couple of things about that. That was after a long collaboration with David O. Selznick, who was known very much for getting in the way of, of his performers, his, his artisans, and offering his opinions. I mean, he had a long collaboration with RKO and David O. Selznick, I mean, for years and years and years. And once he got in the way just a little bit too much, he moved over to Warner Brothers. So I will tell you that the sound of RKO and Warner Brothers of the 1930s and the, and the sound of David O. Selznick's productions all have that similar ring of classical music, impactful classical music that resonates through the entire film. And with Gone with the Wind, if I told you that he was working on two other movies for Warner Brothers at the same time, would you believe me? Because that's the truth. Wow. He was working on three movies while he was working on Gone with the Wind for Selznick and two other Warner Brothers because Warner Brothers would not let him out of their contract. And if he was assigned something, he had to do it. And he took it on. He took it on. And he had to find a, a sound for Gerald O'Hara, the, 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 you know, the, the father of Katie Scarlett. Right. Right. He mm -hmm. had to have a Vivian Lee had to have her own sound. A Clark Gable had his own sound. A Leslie Howard had his own sound. And that movie is magnificent because there are just so many themes that just go well together. Yeah. Just, just magnificent. You know, uh, Manny, that concept of a character having his own theme, very subtle reinforcement of the character, yes. um, that's so common today. And I, I can't so help but think of the famous one. Uh, the most famous one that everybody knows, and that's Jaws, where the the shark had his own theme. theme. Right. Boom, yes. boom, boom, boom. I mean, you heard that music, that's you knew right. the shark was coming. That's right, and 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 of course, Psycho, Bernard Herrmann, and 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 um, um, that Anthony uh, Perkins. Uh, per Perkins. Yeah. yeah, he had his theme. You know, ding, ding, ding. that 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 again, <laughs> that music, Bernard Herrmann, iconic yes. music, all owed to. Max Steiner. When wow. he gets now, not only did he do Gone with the Wind, but he was assigned by Warner Brothers just about every film that was made by James Cagney, George Raft, Edward G. Robinson, just about every film that was done by um, by Errol Flynn. Although Corn, Eric Wolfgang, uh, Korngold, Korngold, yeah, he he did a number of things too. But I will tell you, when he was assigned Casablanca, he was not very happy because he had to create a score around. Um, you know, um, the, the the theme of the love song, which he didn't oh. like. Yeah. <laughs> you must remember this. A kid, you know, that, yeah. You must remember this, yeah. As, right. as time goes by. And, Not, and thank you. A, a song that was written in the early 30s, but he, he creates this theme around this pedestrian song as he saw it. But if you see the opening of Casablanca, it's basically the soundtrack of what he used in 1934 for John Ford's Lost, the, the Lost Patrol. Ooh. It's the exact same theme. Wow. And so Casablanca has a lot of to, to, to owe other films, and of course, as time goes by, but that's the reason why you don't see, um, uh, uh, as time goes by in Casablanca, nominated for anything, because he was using previous material that, that was not eligible for nomination. Yeah. But that wasn't the case for, let's say, now Voyager which that famous iconic Paul Heinrich, he lights up two cigarettes, hands over right. one to, to Betty Davis. <laughs> and, and that music, so iconic. It's so beautiful. Yep. And uh, that's another one of his magnificent works. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, music in general has been um, unrecognized by the public. Uh, movie music, uh -huh. movie scoring. You know, it's, movie it's, even today in the Oscars, um, what seems to get the attention is the 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 song best song, which is yes. you know just a pop song tacked on to get an, an award. It's the scoring for the movie right. that really makes the the emotion the emotional value of the movie yeah. worthwhile. And I mean, so would you would you say there's a direct line between a Steiner and let's say John Williams? Absolutely. I mean, I I just can't imagine what the movie would have been like the social network without that fabulous music that just that drives that that motion mm. picture you know it it, it or or uh, i mean you could just name any i mean how about 
uh, Bridge on the River Kwai, or or even the Alamo with D Dmitry Tiomkin's use of adaptation of, of, of previously used material. I, I just don't see how these films, I mean, Dr. Shivago, I mean, and, and the music, you know, Lara's theme. No, th there's so many great songs, and it just goes back to Steiner. And he worked, and he worked, and his eyesight was failing by the early 1950s, and he worked into the 1960s. I mean, it's hard to believe that here's a man who is known for King Kong and Gone with the Wind, and yet created the sound for A Summer Place. And the theme from A Summer Place is another one of those great, iconic sounds. Sure. And, yeah. and of course, it was popularized because it was adapted by Percy Faith and his arrangements. But the, the arrangement of Percy Faith is nothing like the sound that was created by Max Steiner. And really, that that movie is driven by just a remarkable score. Yeah. 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 Well, so there are well, um... great. Great look at right. uh, Max Steiner. And you know what? Yeah. I think if uh, uh, people uh, uh, go and search for Max Steiner TCM, uh, they'll probably be able to find some place to see a much fuller documentary uh, right. on him and uh, just enjoy um, what you see. Another one of those professionals who oftentimes works, it's you know below the line, and but just is part of the beat. Literally, so of why movies are as good as they are, and received as well because it's just part of the fabric that is unseen. But without it, something would be missing. And yeah. absolutely, and that's the reason why I even created Forgotten Hollywood at all because of, of folks like Max Steiner who should never, ever be forgotten. Thank you, Manny. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.